It's really hard for me to recommend to my students and clients that they spend a lot of money on pedals and amplifiers, especially because you can get such a wide toned vocabulary out of using free amps and VSTs. What I'm gonna do in this video is walk you through how to install these and how to get them working on your DAW. And this will work with any digital audio workstation that supports VSTs. So Reason, Pro Tools, Reaper, stuff like that. Once we've gone through the basics of downloading these and installing them, what I'm gonna do is give you a quick lesson on using effects in your DAW as a guitarist and different ways that you can get really interesting creative sounds by using nothing more than the free stock effects that are built into your DAW. And then lastly, we're gonna talk a little bit about composing with effects. Sometimes an, an effect on its own or a tone on its own can really Really be the backbone for an entire piece of music and section. So at the end of this video, I'll be crafting an interesting tone and we're actually going to turn it into its own piece of music. So let's get started about amps and VSTs, how to install them and how to get them working. There are usually three elements to my heavier guitar tones, a distortion pedal, an amp sim, and an impulse loader. You can use your own physical tube screamer or similar pedal in lieu of a digital one, but we'll be using the TSE 808 from La Pau. Next is our amp sim. This is basically a simulated amp head. The Lapau Amp Pack has several different amps to mess around with, each with its own distinct curves of grit and gain. Last is our Impulse Loader. I use Nadir by Ignite. You can think of this as a fake speaker cabinet that has been mic'd up. Impulse loaders need individual files called impulses to model the sound of a speaker cabinet, so we need to find some impulses to put in here. I'll be using the Catharsis Impulse Pack. Download all these plugins and impulses, the links are in the description, and install them into a folder that holds your VSTs. If you don't have a designated folder for your VSTs, just make one in an easy to find spot. Then inside your DAW, go to your settings and preferences and tell it to search that folder to find VSTs. Let's put our VSTs in the correct order in our signal chain. First our pedal, then our amp sim, and finally our impulse loader. And make sure you've actually loaded an impulse file into Nadir. Now we have a starting point to develop our tone. We can start adjusting the built-in EQs and gain structure. I personally am looking for a clean tone that has a bit of grit to it and high-end bite. If I've got too much gain, I can just turn off my distortion pedal. Or we can completely change amplifiers to find something that feels more like what we're going for. But once I've got something close to what I like, I can experiment with different impulses to create slight variations on my tone. So that's how I start off with my guitar tone, but the real fun happens when you start messing around with the effects. And you don't have to go buy these as pedals or VSTs, you can just use the built-in stock effects that come with your DAW, and with proper creative routing, you can get some really interesting sounds. For example, we can add a reverb unit to this exact same track. and maybe a touch of ping pong delay. And then lay a slight chorus on the whole thing. But this is my least favorite way of adding effects to a guitar. Instead, I prefer to create an effect send. To do this, I create a new blank audio track. And instead of this track receiving a signal from an external instrument, we're gonna change it so it now receives its signal from the output of our guitar track. Now the entire audio from our guitar part has been split and doubled into a new track where we can really mess with it without disturbing our original tone. For example, my parallel track can now be soaked with 100% reverb and an auto pan that is set out of phase to give it a slight tremolo effect. Now we can take this heavily processed track and turn it up and down in the mix to just the right spot where it doesn't drown out our original guitar part. In addition to parallel reverb, I really enjoy using a filtered delay for my leads. Here I have an audio again coming in from my parallel track. I place a delay unit on at 100% wet and crank up the feedback as I wish. And as you can hear, this just creates a classic delay effect. But if we start EQing after our delay, we can filter out the notes that are repeated without affecting our original tone. I personally like to hear these goopy high mids come through the delay track as opposed to these high end frequencies. And once again, I can take this entire effects track and move it up and down in the mix where and when I please.
Now let's talk a little bit about compression. I rarely use compressors for distorted guitars, but clean tracks can really get a lot of benefit out of a compressor that's laid right on the track or run in parallel. So here I've got a nice clean guitar tone that I made, and I'm sending the audio into a parallel track where I've EQ'd out everything on the low end. After that I've placed a compressor, so only those higher end frequencies will trigger the compressor. By heavily compressing these frequencies, we can essentially extend the sustain of our chords and notes, and add more consistency and clarity to our overall tone. Now that I've got a decent sound, I'm going to group these tracks together and process them as one. I'll add a chorus to the entire sound, and a reverb unit. And I'm going to twist these knobs till it feels like 1986 again. Now sometimes you make something so interesting or weird it can inspire an entire song. Here I took a simple distorted guitar, added parallel reverb, and a heavy tremolo effect. Then I placed a frequency shifter and played with the LFO to create this rising, creeping, horror breathing sound. It was really loud and late when I did this, and it legitimately creeped me out. But I recorded the audio anyways and left for the night, and later on I had the idea to put it into an actual song. So I started with a dirty kick drum, and a nasty sound and snare. And then a hi-hat pattern that played around with the triplets in an uncomfortable way. After that, I ran my bass through a virtual guitar amp to get that ultra fuzzy tone. And I just used the notes C and C sharp because that flat two is, in my opinion, the darkest interval you can play. The flat two also inspired a Phrygian dominant melody. I was kind of feeling that Alice in Chains, Marilyn Manson, Nine Inch Nails vibe, and here's what I got out of it. So the point here is that you really don't need to be spending your hard-earned cash on amplifiers and pedals just to start sounding good. Really, if you take that money and invest it into a DAW instead, hopefully you can see the options are unlimited. There's really no stopping to what you can do in that. And literally every single plugin that I downloaded was totally free, so you don't have to spend a dime on those. That being said, you could go wild and spend just as much money on digital effects as you do with physical effects. And I'll say this, working with effects on the computer prepares you a lot for working with effects in the real world. When I get a pedal now, I'm very familiar with the idea of wet and dry and feedback and high pass filters and low pass filters because they're things I had to work with on the computer first. So I do feel that working on the computer first and then taking it to the physical world is just as a legitimate way as working with a pedal board and then learning to work on your computer. And just as a note, almost every video that I've done on this channel, all the music is done and all the guitar parts are done using amps and VSTs. I don't actually mic up my guitar for these videos. I run it all through there. And I think I've had videos in here where I've gotten some really good guitar tones coming out of that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. If you did enjoy this video, you can thank my awesome Patreon supporters for making it possible. If you really enjoyed this video, you can consider supporting them. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. When I get inside you.